All right, this is the second video in my Minesweeper strategy um, basics series. Uh, the first video, uh, hopefully you watched uh, if you needed to, it was concerned with what I'll call first order pattern recognition. And those are situations where you only have to look at one square and which uh, covered squares it's touching to know uh, which squares are a mine or which are safe. For example, uh, as we covered this one on a corner, you only have to look at that one and it's just touching that one. So you know that covered square has to be a mine. You don't need to worry about the any of the squares next to it, that one or that one, this two, any of these zeros, whatever. You just see a one there and diagonally the only thing it's touching on this corner is going to have to be a mine. You just recognize that. Muscle memory, awesome, you got that. But there are also uh, patterns that require you to look at more than just one square at a time. And those are second order patterns. And I will cover the two most basic in this video. The first uh, basic second order pattern to recognize, that's the easiest, is the one one. I drew a very lucky board here for this uh, tutoring purpose, and we have a lot of ones and a lot of flat walls. So this happens when you see two ones next to each other against a flat wall and on the edge of a board. Now this one, the number one there, means that of these two covered squares that the one is touching, one of them has to be a mine. This one obviously means that one of these three covered squares that this one is touching has to be a mine. If you are very new to Minesweeper, you might just not know what the heck to do and say, ah, oh, there's a corner, I'm just gonna do that and uncover that one and start guessing. But uh, there's a very simple pattern to recognize here. Two ones against a flat wall on the edge of a board mean that that one is safe. How do you know that? Um, explaining uh, the thinking behind it is this one again means that one of these is a mine for sure and this one uh, is only touching one mine among these three and since we just found that because that one is only touching these two one of them has to be a mine then this one is touching a mine here or here we don't know which one of them is though and that means that this one it, that uh, is also touching this third square means that this third square cannot be a mine. You can just go ahead and uh, click it, it's safe. Now, again, uh, don't be confused if things get vertical instead of horizontal or vice versa. We have the exact same pattern going on up here. Two ones against a flat wall on the edge of a board and we know that that one is safe. Awesome. And if you're really clever, you might have noticed that these two ones are effectively uh, on the edge of the board because there's no other mines over here. It might as well be the edge of the board. So we have two ones against a flat wall against effectively the edge of the board. The same logic applies. One of these two has to be a mine because of that one and one of these three has to be a mine but we know it's already going to be one of these two. So that one can't be the one mine that this is touching. So it's safe. So if uh, you ever see two ones against a flat wall on the edge of a board or even the effective edge of the board like that, then you can know that the third mine uh, away from the edge of the board is not going to be a mine. All right, this uh, pattern, another second order pattern, meaning you have to look at uh, two different numbered squares to figure out what's going on is, uh, has been called uh, by one Minesweeper strategy website, the golden rule of Minesweeper. I like that because this one shows up all the time in various guises and is kind of the building block for a lot more of um, patterns, more advanced ones. Now, again, you see these one ones, uh, this happens all the time. We're gonna know that that one isn't a mine because of this one one pattern, same thing here, that one won't be a mine. But uh, for purposes here, uh, we are going to look at this one and this two and see what those can tell us. One ones up against a flat wall on the edge of the board 
uh, happen decently often, but you'd be surprised how often a one and a two against a flat wall um, occur even more often. So this pattern is, like I said, really common, really important. Um, the gist is, if you see this one and this two, there are two things you can do. You can mark that as a mine, and you can know that this is not going to be a mine. So how do you know that? Uh, similar logic. Let's start as to the one and the one on the edge. Let's start with this one. One of these three has to be a mine, and no more than that. Now, uh, this two is touching two mines among these three. Uh, no more, no less. But this one means that both of these couldn't be a mine. So this two, it's touching two mines, but it can't be those two together. That situation, bad. See why? That one it would now be touching two mines, not kosher. So we know that not both of these are mines. That might sound kind of useless for now. We've um, narrow down uh, this situation and the situation where neither of them is a mine. Um, it can't be the fact that neither of them is a mine because then this two could only be touching one mine there. So one of these is, but not both. And what the heck does that help us with? Well, come back to this two now, knowing that one of these is a mine, but not both. And this one's touching three covered squares and only one of these two can be a mine. What does that tell us about this third one? Has to be a mine. Now, uh, going the other direction, this two um, is touching one mine here, and this one is uh, also touching these two. And since one of these has to be a mine, then what happens with this third square that the one is touching? One of them's a mine, so that one can't be. That happened to open up a whole lot for us. Um, you might not always be that lucky with the one, two combination, but that is a very important pattern to know. Looking at a one and a two, again, the uh, requirements are a one next to a two against a flat wall, meaning at least these uh, three or four have to be um, in a row there covered and you know nothing up here. So that comes up a lot, uh, again, sometimes disguised, but uh, you should know it and recognize it and get to the point where when you see in a one and a two, you can just say, oh, mine there and no mine there. So that should be the end of this video. Uh, I hope that is helpful and let me know if you have any questions.